They say this mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. We know that hope is never lost. Oh, for there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what, there is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Hey, yes. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. Trust in you. Final say, move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe, move, break, yes, we do, from the impossible, we'll see a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe, Lord.
ask you to open your Bibles to uh, Psalms 103. Amen. Whatever device you use, Psalms 103. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we can go there for just a few moments. Amen. We've been teaching from a series in this psalm. I encourage you to read the entire psalm because it pays to serve God. Amen. It pays to serve him. There are benefits in knowing Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes we focus on the minuses, but our life is full of pluses. And if we'll begin to focus on what we get with Jesus, amen, we'll begin to shout out like David did in this psalm. He began with saying, bless the Lord. Let's read those first five verses if we would. Amen. And I encourage you to read the entirety of this psalm because we're going to skip through it this week and, and on next week as well. Amen. But there are some things that God has in this for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Psalms 103, beginning with verses 1 through verse 5. I read verse 1, you read verse 2, and we're all in eight, we'll read verse 5 together, amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases.
who satisfied, let's read, who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. You know, beloved, we could take a week with each, with each one of those verses. Amen. Hallelujah. But I believe David began to be overwhelmed by the goodness of God. And he began to pen, bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. We've sang it in songs, amen, but I don't know if we've ever really studied it in a way that we're looking at it now, but it pays to serve God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory. We pray, God, that you would cause the words, this logos, to be lifted off the page and become a living word in us. God, that we can do what you said in this word, to bless your name with everything that is in us in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would take my tongue, make it the pen of a ready writer. I pray that you would speak distinctly and that, God, you would write your word in our hearts in Jesus' name that we might walk it out. And for it, God, we give you the glory and thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, in Scripture, when something is mentioned over and over, God is putting an emphasis on that for us. And the theme it sings in this psalm is blessing God. Amen. Now, when I call this, it pays to be saved. As a subtopic, I would say the benefits of serving God. Amen. And when we begin to look in this scripture, I want us to look at it from a positive light because in a lot of, lots of times we think in terms of what we gave up to get right with God, what we stopped doing to get saved. And actually, we don't give up anything we didn't need to let go anyhow. Amen. Amen. But when we got saved, we gained. We gain in this life and to die is gain for our eternity. And we begin to compare that to a job. You, when you go to apply for a job, one of the things you want to know is what's in that for you. What benefits does this job offer? Because if all you got was a salary, you probably go looking for an, another source of income. But when you begin to look at the totality of what is given, amen, the retirement, the insurance benefits, the, the profit sharing, you know, y'all know y'all look at those things, right? Amen. And we call those benefits just things that are given you by virtue of being hired by a particular employer. Well, we might need to look at the benefits of serving God. Because too, too often because we've looked at the, the giving up side, we presented the gospel in not the best light because Jesus adds to your life. There are a lot of things you won't get in life outside of Jesus. Amen. You can get happiness, but only in Christ will you have joy. Amen. And your happiness will change on you, but joy is a constant. It's a fruit of the Spirit of God. Amen. And so David here begins to exhort us. Number one, he says in verse one, bless the Lord, O my soul, and with everything that is in us. Amen. You know, not a half hearted blessing God, not a, a, just a weak, wimpy, oh, bless the Lord. But from the very depths of our being to bless God, O my soul, and all, somebody say all, all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then he says, bless the Lord and forget not. Somebody said, forget not. Forget not all his benefits. So there are benefits in serving God. And if we don't watch it, we'll forget the benefit. And our serving God can become a drudgery. Amen. Well, you know, here's the time to go to church again. It's time to go to Wednesday service. You know, man, I know I should be reading my. Don't forget the benefit. Amen. Amen. You know, man, I got to get my prayer life. Look, there are benefits in praying. Amen. Well, I know they say I need to spend time with the Lord, but there are benefits in spending time with him. See, God has given us a package, but it's up to you and I to investigate what he's given so we can receive the benefit of. And then we'll be like David. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Amen. God is good. Amen. Because we've tasted and seen just how good God really is. Amen. So what we gain through salvation is the why we all need to be saved. We're going to open this up a little bit on the day because these are benefits that come. Amen. And he begins to lay out for us in this psalm what we gain through knowing our Lord Jesus. Amen. 
And that's why I say we need to stop thinking about salvation simply in terms. And we see it when we witness to people. You see it when you try and invite folk even to church. They want to talk about what they need to stop doing first. Well, they got that negative concept from the church because too often we have prevented a relationship with Jesus preceded by what you had to give up to get to Jesus. When actually everything we give up is things we needed to let go anyhow. You needed to get out the club. Amen. You need to stop chasing every skirt. We didn't need to be looking at pornography. Amen. We didn't need to be abusing um, uh, our privileges that God has given us and our, and our freedoms. You know, we needed to let those things go anyway. Amen. You know, we needed to let the streets go, didn't we? Amen. Even if you're not saved, you're better off if you get off the street. And if you're home before midnight. So they used to teach us nothing good happens after midnight. It's still true. Yeah. Amen. You know, and so when we frame this relationship based on what you give up, people come into this relationship not expecting. I gave up all this to serve the Lord. Amen. Well, actually, you gain. Amen. 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 You know, we got to like give, 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 give. David said, forget not all his benefits. See, benefits are added to us as a byproduct of you and I being saved. Amen. So we gain that salvation. In Philippians 3, 8, Paul said this. Oh, man, Paul got this thing down. I love the Apostle Paul. He's one I'm looking forward to meet, too. Amen. But in Philippians 3, verse 8, Paul said, Yea, doubtless, and I call all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. In other words, it cost him in a natural sense, but he saw it. Notice what he says here. And do count them but dung that I might win or gain Christ, even though he lost a lot in the natural. You know, probably family and familiar relationships he lost. His, his place of standing in a synagogue. He was persecuted for the sake of Jesus. He said, look, all that stuff I count as waste. A bad product that I might win. That word in the Greek means gain depending on what translation look at, that I might gain Christ. All this other stuff is just lost. Jesus adds to our life. Amen. Even if we go through tough seasons and even persecution, amen, there are still things that he has given in our lives that we can't get anywhere else. Amen. And we call these benefits. And Paul said, I count them but lost that I might win, that I might gain Jesus Christ. Do we see Jesus that way? Amen. Oh, do you look at life, man? I can't do this no more because I'm a Christian. Amen. Look, if that's all the joy we have in salvation, no wonder why people aren't buying what we're selling. Amen. If anything, they ought to see different in us now. It should be something that sustains us and keeps us. The world is, looks like it's falling all apart. But we know how things are actually coming together. And so in the middle of all this, we can still have joy. We can still bless the Lord because we know our salvation is much nearer now than when we first believed. Why? Because we know the author of the book. And so in the middle of this all, we can still bless his name. He's still worthy, isn't he? Amen. And so then he begins to say, don't forget the benefits. Well, pastor, what are the benefits of salvation? That's why I said we need to take the time at, from time to time, like right now, and open up this package and see what we get when we get saved. Amen? So that we'll be able to bless the Lord for what we have. Hallelujah. Verse 3, he says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. We're going to treat the second part of that verse on a different week concerning healing because we're going to preach healing. Amen. But the first benefit is forgiveness of iniquity and sin. Amen. Now, have we considered just how blessed we are to gain at salvation this thing called forgiveness of sins? Amen. Romans 4, 7 says, how blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are are covered. Amen. Concealed. And in other words, when we came to the Lord Jesus, yeah, we were sinners. Amen. You know, we we're forgiven sinners, but now we've received give, forgiveness and now we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But he says, don't forget 
that your iniquities, your sin are, is forgiven and they are concealed, Romans 4, 7. Amen. Because oftentimes we, we, we're kind of hindered in our present day serving God by remembrance of yesterday's sin. Because I was this in my former life, still feeling like I can't serve God fully in this present life because you're still out of that way. God wants to set you free. God says concerning this air, forgiveness is also a release. God is not laying your sin against you. Jesus paid the price for it. Amen. Matter of fact, verse 12 in this same psalm says, as far as the east is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions from us. So if something is in your mind, reminding you of what you were and what you did before Jesus saved you, it's not God. Amen. If every time you want to step out and serve God and let him use you and, and that little voice in the back of your head, but remember what you did before, it's not God. The Bible says he has placed your sin in a seat of forgiveness. And he said, your sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Amen. So if God didn't remember them, amen, no need for you to sit around and remember them either. Amen. Don't be in bondage in serving God today when you have the benefit of forgiveness of sins. Now, I know that involves the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I know that involves the shedding of his blood to redeem you and I. Amen. But God has forgiven us. That's a benefit. And we ought to thank God that we are forgiven. We were singing that this, this morning in the song, amen, you know, uh, forgiven. Amen. We really are forgiven. And God is holding nothing against you and I anymore. Amen. And then once we get that revelation, we can serve God. Notice verse 10, same song. He had not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Why? Jesus paid the price for it. Jesus bore the weight of our sins so that you and I, the sinner, could be free in him. Amen. Amen. And so this is a benefit of knowing Jesus. We need to thank God for our salvation. Thank God that your sins are forgiven. Thank God that you are in the number now. You had a past. All you have now is a present and a future. Amen. Your past is past. Amen. Matter of fact, so much so the person that did the things that we did in the past in, in no longer here. We're new creations in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And so we have an opportunity to present to people a reset in life. Amen. Through preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we gain that salvation. First, the benefit of forgiveness of sins. Amen. That happened before you got saved. Amen. And praise God, when he shed the blood and redeemed you and I, he settled the issue. Romans 4, 8 says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And because you're blessed then, bless the Lord that he's not laying your sin to your charge. I don't have to pay for what I did. Jesus paid for it. Amen. Hallelujah. And since Jesus paid for it, he purchased me, redeemed me, and now I go free. And so I praise God that I am forgiven. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes when we're worshiping God, we need to remember how he brought us out. Amen. See, you don't look back to feel bad about what you did. You look back to see how good God's been. He didn't leave us where we were. He brought us out and he gave us new life in Jesus name. Amen. So we're blessed to be forgiven, aren't we? Amen. And then another benefit we receive, verse four, amen, in addition to being saved, notice it says, who redeem it thy life from destruction. See, we were forgiven before we got saved. Jesus redeemed us before we got saved. But when we respond to him, note, he has redeemed our life from destruction. The word destruction, chakot, it means from the pit or from deception even. God, why? Because we were destined for, for the pit. See, all of humanity, they talking about viruses today, all of humanity has been infected by a virus called sin. No cure. Amen. It's spread, not through contact, but through Adam. Amen. And so we are born in sin, infected, and we're destined for the pit of destruction. But the Bible says, bless the Lord who redeemed or bought back my life from destruction. 
Saints, we were on the way to a devil's hell, but Jesus intervened when he came to earth, lived a sinless life, qualified to be our Savior so I could be saved. You too, by the way. Amen. And, and when I, so he redeemed our life from the pit so that we would receive him, we wouldn't experience that eternal separation. I thank God. Amen. I bless God, amen, that I don't have to be afraid of going to hell to be eternally separated from God. Hell is real. And all of humanity is destined there, one heartbeat, one breath away from eternal separation from God, except we repent and get right with Jesus. Amen. And so he has redeemed our life from destruction. Amen. He did that through the offering of himself and the shedding of his blood, didn't he? Amen. And so when he offered himself, this benefit of redemption gives you and I the opportunity of new life. You know, that's why I call this thing called salvation. Amen. Uh, a reset to borrow a term. Amen. Because the only way that we can have a new life is in Christ Jesus. You can turn over a new leaf and you'll be the same old you trying to do a new thing. But when you know Jesus, you don't just try and do a new thing. You become a new thing. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Behold, all old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. And now all things are of God. And so you and I have new life. That's a benefit, isn't it? Amen. We need to thank God for salvation. He is the God of our salvation. Amen. He's the rock of our salvation, isn't he? He's our savior, the holy one of Israel, our redeemer, Jesus Christ. And so through Jesus, we now have new life. Amen. He re Oh, I, I guess you can think like a computer. And every so often they think it hung up, don't it? <laughs> Amen. You just go peck, 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 moving the mouse, punching keys, nothing happens. It's stuck where it is. Amen. Sometimes you got to reboot it. Now, all our lives needed a reboot. <laughs> we were infected and frozen. Amen. Jesus paid the price so he could reboot our life, make you and I a new creation, lift us up out of the miry clay, set our feet on a solid rock and change our destination. Amen. See, we need to praise God for that. See, a lot of people aren't as joyful in the Lord because they didn't consider what they've entered into through receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. My life is redeemed from destruction. And as a benefit of that, he has forgiven all my sins. He's healing me of my iniquities and my diseases. And he's redeeming my life from destruction and crowning me with loving kindness and tender mercies. God has good thoughts toward you and I now. Amen. And so when we begin to walk in what God has given, it'll make you and I thankful. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got a new life. The old is passed away. And when the old life passed away, you got another benefit. When you turn from the world, you turn to Jesus. Amen. And Jesus came in, washed you in his blood. Amen. And you became a new creation. All of a sudden you had peace. See, that's a benefit of salvation. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore, being justified. Now, remember, we see therefore, we have to look and see what it is therefore. He said, because we are justified by faith, we have peace peace. See, now my eternity is not something I have to be afraid of. When I understand that I have been, I've got a foretaste, amen, amen, of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, amen. That's a good old song, amen. And so I've got a foretaste of this through the new birth, but my eternity is sealed from the point and I have peace. So I know when I leave this world, I go to be with Jesus. Amen. Justified by faith, we have peace. This is a peace that the world can't give you, beloved. Amen. Philippians 4, 7 calls it a peace that passes all understanding. And that this peace has the power to guard or to keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. It's a peace when you're going through the storm, you're not shaken. Amen. Because you know that Jesus has gone before you through the storm. Amen. You know, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil why, for thou art with me. And so in the middle of it, when it looks the worst, in our spirit, we're still settled and calm because we know the great shepherd is keeping us. Even when I don't see him, I got peace because he said, I'll never leave you. Amen. And then I have peace because of what he said, John 16, He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, 
you might have peace. See, our peace doesn't come from not having turmoil around us, amen. If gas was cheap and grocery prices were down, that's, that's not the source of our peace, amen. Our peace shouldn't be based on who or who is not in a political office, amen. Our peace should not be on what sands there are in the heavens that we might see. Our peace is in the person of Jesus. He said that in me you might have peace. And so the only way we'll get this peace that passes all understanding, that is not shaken in the middle of a storm, is through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank God for the peace of God. Amen. You've experienced that peace. People around you are afraid. You know, they're running around afraid of the COVID. Amen. And, and you're going, no, nah, you know, my life is in him. Amen. Praise God. If I did pass out, pass away, I pass away to Jesus. See, that, that gives you peace, doesn't it? Amen. And so there's a peace that can keep us that the world around us can't understand. That's a bad product of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing what he said in his word. Amen. See, that's a benefit, isn't it? Well, I thank God for that peace. When you begin to see the storm clouds gathering and the rumors of war and, and, and the world gets, you know, you can feel it trying to come up on you. And then something else comes over you. Wait a minute. God said it would be like this. I'm built for this. I'm called to the kingdom for such a time as this. And therefore, in this time, God's grace is sufficient to keep me and to give me peace in 2022 and beyond. Amen. And see, then our hearts will be at rest and our hearts will be at peace. Amen. Even though we can get riled up on the inside. Amen. We're settled. We know how this thing ends. We know that the victory is already won. And we know that Satan, yeah, he's rattling his sword and doing all these things. But on the inside, man, we serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And we know that he's going to crack the sky and we go up to be with him. And we know that he's going to return. He's going to set things in order. See, that gives us peace. Amen. And even if things get worse and worse, amen, our peace isn't external, it's internal. And so thank God, it's a benefit of having a peace, knowing that your life is right with him. Amen. The world didn't give you that peace, and the world can't take it away in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. But along with that, along with the benefits and the forgiveness of iniquities and the healing of diseases and a redeemed life, amen, there's more. Look at your neighbor and tell them more. Because when you receive redemption and you got a new life, along with a new life, you got a new family. Amen. See, for you and I, amen, that's a benefit. Amen. We have a family now in the spirit that is closer than some of ours through the flesh. Because if I know Christ and they don't, I'm actually closer to them than I am with my flesh and blood. Amen. Now, if you get that revelation, it'll deliver you from your natural family. Some of us are hindered in our serving God because of what our people would say. You need to be delivered from them. Amen. Amen. See, Paul said, delivering you from the people unto whom now I send you. If you're bound, bound, you can't reach them. If you're afraid to pray grace at the table around them, amen. If you're afraid to share your faith and let them know what you believe and why, how are you going to reach them? Amen. So we need to recognize our family in Christ supersedes this family because people are keeping in bondage to, well, you know now, blood is thicker than water. Well, the blood of Jesus is thicker than my natural blood with you. Yeah. Amen. See, that'll set you free. So my number one obligation as a believer now is to him, even above my natural family. Ephesians 3.15 says, the whole family in heaven and earth is named after Christ. This is a family that I've been planted in now that I know Jesus. Does that mean I treat my natural family differently? No, I love them. But I recognize that if it comes to obeying God and offending them, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to bless my food, talk about Jesus. Amen. Let them know why, who I believe in and why, and why they need to believe in them. 
<laughs> How else are you going to reach them? You know, we can't, we can't just take for granted now that somebody will get to them. Things are moving too quickly now. You know, we need to step out on the ledge and share ourselves. Amen. And so we've got a new life. We've got a new family. And our family is named the church. The body of Christ, the ecclesia, the, the called out ones. We're in that number now. Yep, you're one of them. Amen. And I'm proud to be one of them. Man, I'm so glad to be in the family of God. We used to sing that song, amen. And so it's a blessing to be in God's family because in the end, it's the only family that counts. It's the only family that has eternal life. It's the only family that is destined to, catch this, the benefit of a new destination. So you get all these things when you get saved. This is in your package. Amen. By the way, you got a new destiny too. Let me harp on that first. Amen. See, God reoriented our lives and gave us a new purpose in living. We're no longer just to live for ourselves when we get saved. We find our fulfillment in living to serve God and to bless others. Amen. And so we have a new orientation in life. Our lives aren't all just about us anymore. It's about Jesus and what we can do to please him. Amen. So we at Salvation, one of the benefits, we get a new destiny. Amen. And now we are planted in the kingdom of God. And as a believer in the kingdom of God, benefit a new destination. Amen. Why? Because our default destination was the pit and destruction. When we came to Jesus, amen, and our lives were reset by way of the new birth, we became part of his family and our destiny and our destination changed. Amen. We were on the way to hell. Amen. But when Jesus came in, he spun that around 180 and we on the way to heaven. Amen. So that's a new destination. Hey, we consider going to heaven a blessing. I found when I began to look at what people said, a lot of believers go, nah, because they think they'll be floating around on clouds, that they'll be singing all day long. Well, I wouldn't want to sing 24 seven for eternity. You're not going to do it either. See, we've not investigated this package. What we do, amen, we're going to be learning. We're going to be busy. You know, there's more to eternity than us just sitting around playing a harp and singing. Thank God we'll be worshiping and magnifying God, but we also have other tasks when you begin to read the book. Amen. And we need to know that's part of our salvation package. Why? Because we're redeemed. We've got a new life. Amen. And God has reset our course. Amen. And so when God reset our course and gave you and I peace, guess what, beloved? That my conscience. Remember when you used to lie and not feel bad? And before y'all were saved, none of y'all were like that, right? <laughs> Some of us were lying wonders, weren't we? But to get out of any type, you know, black lie, white lie, whatever lie, as long as it did it, amen. <laughs> Am I right? Amen. But then something happened, amen. You know, see, over the time, our conscience got seared, didn't it? Amen. And now that you're saved, it's like even now when you do something small, it bothers you. Now, that's a witness that you're saved, too. The change in your conscience is a benefit of salvation. See, that's why the Bible says, I take out that heart of stone and put in you a heart of flesh. Amen. So when God released you from the burden and the penalty of sin, part of that is a new conscience. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Paul talked about it in Romans 9, 1. Amen. But, you know, and so our consciences were changed when we were saved because it's part of the new man that we are. And so now things that used to not bother you, they uh, bother you. Now go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Amen. See, even our conscience was sprinkled in the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, verse 22. I'm going to read 19 starting. He says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he had consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. 
the word conscience with knowledge, having our hearts sprinkled from that evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. See, when we were saved, our consciences were washed in the blood of Jesus, and now we can have a clean conscience before God. Hebrews 9 verse 14 puts it this way. Amen. And how much more shall the blood of Christ? See, the blood of Jesus is the element in that. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge or wash your conscience from dead works? Amen. See, our consciences are clean by the blood of Jesus so we can serve the living God. Amen. You don't have to be under the guilt of how you used to live anymore. In this new life, God has washed your conscience. And so who is he that condemned it, Paul said? Amen. That's Satan. Amen. See, Jesus even told the disciples, you are clean through the word I've spoken unto you. Amen. In Christ, he cleans our life up. That's a benefit of salvation, isn't it? You know, when we got saved, our desires began to change too, didn't it? Amen. Because the change on the inside begins to affect us outwardly and things that used to bind us outwardly begin to fall away. Praise God for that benefit. Amen. You know, now we have to walk the walk. Amen. But he has changed our life. Amen. Thank God for the benefits of salvation. That's why I say it pays to be saved. Amen. All my past is forgiven. Amen. You know, a lot of people hold you to your past. Amen. You need to really rattle their cage and say, that man dead. That woman has died. Well, they really did. Amen. But I just shake them up a little bit. What do you mean? You're still here. Well, everything that I was is now changed. I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. You might look at my past. I'm telling you, all I have is today and a future. Well, you used to. I don't anymore. Not perfect. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As believers, we still stumble and make mistakes. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. We have the benefit of repentance. <laughs> Amen. First John 1, 9, our toolbox. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So God has a way to keep us clean. Amen. So he's cleaned our conscience when we bumble it and we mess up. He convicts us of sin. We confess our sin. He cleanses us from unrighteousness, and then we can go on back and serve him. See, we're not to be bound by our failure. A lot of Christians stop serving God because they missed it at, at some point. God knew we would miss it, and a benefit of salvation he provided for us is cleansing and forgiveness. Amen. Now, they don't work unless we activate them. Amen. You can have benefits all day long, but if you don't know them and you don't work them, the devil can still keep you as a believer in bondage through condemnation. When the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. But if we live under the threat, under the weight, under the words of condemnation, you won't serve God to the fullest that you can. If you see or feel like, man, you know, I, I really can't do anything right. Well, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ. Amen. See, one of the benefits of us being saved is we don't have to do things alone anymore. Amen. Christ works in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. So when he tells us to do it, he works in us the ability to get it done called grace. Amen. Thank God for the grace of God. See, we need to bless God for what he's given. Amen. Thank God that he has given me grace so I can do what he told him, what he told me to do. Amen. I have to wrestle with Lord. I can't. He said I could. And be like Paul when in 2 Corinthians 12, that thorn in the flesh was after him. And I don't know why people say they don't know what it was when the Bible plainly says what it was. He said, the messenger of Satan sent to buffet me. And he prayed and asked God to deal with it. And God said, my ability or grace is sufficient. See, we have sufficient grace as a benefit of being saved. God's power at work in you and I to do what God called us to do. We are anointed by God to do what God called us to do. The Bible says we have an anointing in us, 1 John 2, 27. And that anointing works in us to lead us, to teach us. It's the Spirit of God indwelling us. That's a benefit of being saved. And he will lead and guide us into all truth. So you and I have an ability not to be led into error if we follow the Spirit of God. The world doesn't have that. 
That's a benefit of being a believer. We don't have to depend on our eyes for guidance. We depend on the Spirit of God leading us internally. Amen. That's our GPS system, our God positioning system. Amen. By him leading us internally, he can carry us through all this stuff, and we don't have to be perturbed by it. Amen? God loads us with benefits, beloved. And we really thought about that that much. Man, it benefits me to be saved. It's not just what I gave up, it's what I got. Man, I gained Jesus. Amen. And I left the world. You know, what good was the world doing me anyway? Let's think about that for a minute. Most of what we were doing in the world were things we shouldn't have been doing anyhow. Amen. And most of it had a negative effect in our life, in our relationships. But the enemy phrases it at, you know, you got to let this go. You know, even when it comes to marriage, they try and make it look like, man, I've forsaken all others. Well, what did you gain when you got married? You gained a spouse. See, we framed it. No wonder why they're scared to get married. See, just like salvation, we framed it from a negative. See, some of us never saw that the right then. Got to give up all the mother women. We shouldn't have been chasing all the mother women. Anyway, you should have been keeping yourself for Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. And you gained a partner for life. Of the opposite sex. <laughs> See, you had to add that now. <laughs> it pays to do it God's way, doesn't it? Amen. And so it pays to be saved. So what we gave up, wasn't, we should have been letting go anyhow. And to get the benefit of salvation. Notice this as I get ready to close. We're still in Psalm, Psalm 68. When I began to look at this, I said, man, the Bible mentioned benefits in several different spots. Psalm 68, verse 19, it's, it says, blessed be the Lord. There that term, blessed be the Lord, who daily loaded us with benefits. See, God wants to daily load you and I with benefits. See, God has good things for us, Amen. Even the God of our salvation, Selah, pause and think about that. He daily loads us with benefits. In other words, on a daily basis, you don't have to get up and carry the weight of the world. Jesus already bore it. Amen. The American Standard Version says, who daily bared our burdens, even God. One of the benefits of being saved is you don't have to carry your burden. God didn't build you and I to be worried and to be dragged down by guilt and by worry and by um, anxiety, amen, and stress. You know, God doesn't want us stressing out about the world today. Wow, pastor, did Jesus say anything about that? Yeah, benefit of being saved is Jesus is our burden bearer. He is not your burden bringer. He is our burden bearer. And he even told us what to do. Go to Matthew chapter, <laughs> amen, uh, 11. He even told us what to do with him. See, we try and make allowances for, now that doesn't mean you don't plan, that you don't think, that you don't innovate. It just means you're not to be sitting around, you know, uh, chewing, you know, chewing your tongue about the events happening in the world today. That's not God's will. God doesn't want us twisted up in knots and, and having our, our, our ulcers over what's happening in the world. No, God doesn't desire that. Amen. God doesn't want us pushed to the point of anxiety and breaking ourselves down because of what we see. Now, Jesus did say men's hearts would fail for things they see coming, but he wasn't talking about us. Amen. Matthew chapter 11. I love these verses here. Jesus himself talking. Amen. Verse um, 28. Amen. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, man, what a benefit there, isn't it? Amen. People, you know, we're already at rest. Now, we're going to enter into our rest. We have to labor to get to it. But one benefit of being saved is a rest in him. Amen. 
See, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are safe. We can rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, if the burden is weighing you down and you can't function because of it, Jesus didn't put it on you. He said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And when we look outside ourselves at the world and what's going on in the world and you get weighted, you get distressed, you get worried, you get burdened down. He told you to cast your burden on him. So a benefit is he'll carry the weight if we'll give it to him. Now we exercise in that. Y'all still love pastor? Psalms 55, 22 says, cast that burden on the Lord. Amen. See, we're not built to carry a lot of this stuff. So we need to learn to, by faith, throw it over on him out of obedience because he said, throw it over on him. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain or keep you. So as a believer, then, if I give in to the worries of this world, the, the pressure, the frustration, you know, I can feel just as boxed and caved in as the unsaved. But we're to take our cares and cast them. You know, one of the um, uh, ways we often have in the church world, you know, our parting greeting was uh, take care. Uh oh, pastor about to step on a sacred cow. I hear that thing mooing right now. I'm about to kill it. <laughs> Y'all know we've out over time. You pretty much. All right. I'll see you later. Take care. Sounds innocent. It's not biblical. We want to be biblical believers. He said, cast your burden on the Lord. Cast your care, your weight, your burden on the Lord. We tell them, folk, take care. Now, we're really telling them to watch it, you know, but the way it sounds, we're telling them, and we take it, we go worry about them, they'll worry a little more. <laughs> so now, you know, both of y'all sitting there worrying together. What we're to do is to take that worry and cast it over on Jesus, and he'll give us peace. Let me give y'all a scripture on that. Amen. Can y'all handle a little bit? Go back. We're in Matthew. Go back to Matthew chapter 6. Jesus laid this thing out. He framed it good. Jesus framed this thing so tight for you and I, beloved, we have no wiggle room. Amen. Now, notice what Jesus said. Therefore, verse 25 Take no thought for your life. Don't worry about your life. See, our life is in his head. Paul said our lives are hid with Christ in, with God in Christ. The world can't touch my life. They can touch my body. But my life is in Jesus. And if the world takes this body, if this body is laid down in this life, I go to be with Jesus. Jesus said, take no thought. For your life, what she sh you shall eat. Worry about, well, I don't know where my next meal coming from. He said, don't take thought for it. Didn't he say he will provide all our needs? Philippians 4.19. Now, it's easy to believe Philippians 4.19 when the grocery shelves are full. See, you don't really have to believe it. You just need faith to get to the store. And something in your pocket. You're all right. But when the shelves don't have it, See, this is where we're heading. We're going to have to walk out in real faith before Jesus comes. <laughs> Sister Brenda and I, we were talking to um, someone who had been in different parts of Africa last weekend at a, at a homegoing ceremony, and he was talking about how they believed in Africa. He said, what we call trust, he said, nah, that's just hoping God will do it. He said, those folk had faith. So much faith when they were threatened to be killed if they didn't stop the service. The bishop looked over at the armed guards and said, we have in service, and they backed down. That's faith. He said that when they preached a word of healing here, nothing happened. They went there and preached the same thing, and folk were coming out of chairs. Why? Because they believed in the supernatural. Amen. See, God can take care of you and I, but we got to believe it. And we can't base it on whether we see something on the shelf or not. 
It's according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So even if it's not there, God is still able to prepare. Jesus said, take no fault for what you eat. And then he gave us examples about it. Pastor, oh, you, you way out there now. He said, uh-uh. He said, what we will drink, nor yet for your body what you will put on. He can only say that. You know, he made the clothes last for 40 years with them in the wilderness. Yeah, but the fashion changed. They didn't know it. <laughs> he said, it's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Look at the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the bonds yet your heavenly father. Feed at them. Are you, much, are you not much better than they? Amen. He went on to say that, why worry about how tall you are? Man, if I just hit another inch. Verse 28, why are you worrying about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do spin. Yet I say that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the sea, shall he not much more clothe you? He's encouraging us to believe him. O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought saying what shall see you take a thought when you say it. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, he only wants us to do verse 33, 3. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. See, we're not to be worried about those things. If we follow him, he'll give us what we need. That's the benefit, isn't it? The world doesn't have that guarantee. He's given that to you and I. Amen. And so he's given us the benefit. We saw in the, in the second verse you know, even healing came under that as a benefit. The strength that God gives us. He's the strength of our life. He's given you and I a new life. Amen. And so we need to trust him. Don't worry about tomorrow. Notice verse 34. Therefore, take no thought for tomorrow. He didn't say don't plan. Amen. He just said don't worry about what tomorrow brings. He's already in our tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. If we're so busy worrying about what's going to happen in the world tomorrow, you can't even really live right today. If you're so busy worrying about what you did yesterday that wasn't right, you can't live in today. <laughs> Be content. Amen. And so we need to not be burdened down. We need to cast these things over on the Lord. Go to Psalms 116 and then we're closing. Amen. Because I, I want to close with the thought, then what are we to do? What should we give God then? Amen. We see here that we're to bless the Lord with all that is in us. Bless his holy name. Amen. And then the psalmist went through just these. There are more benefits to serving God. But he went through these as an encouragement for us to bless him, to magnify his name. Come into Psalms 116. Note what verse 12, the psalmist once again, what shall I render? What shall I give unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? All these things that God gave me in my salvation package, what shall I give back to God? And then he tells us the first thing, because Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. Verse 13, I will take the cup of salvation. If you don't know Jesus, get to know Jesus. Amen. Salvation is a benefit extended to the whole world. What shall I give him for the many benefits he's given? I will give unto him. Notice this, he says, I will take. The cup of salvation. You need to get saved. Amen. If you're not saved, get saved. That's part of our evangelism. Isn't it? If people want a way out of what the world is pressing on them, they need to get right with Jesus. That doesn't take us out of trouble, but we don't go through troubles alone. And we have his presence indwelling us to lead us through. So the most important thing for mankind is to get right with God through salvation. Then he tells us, what else should I give the Lord as because of the benefits? I need to get to know him. I will call 13B upon the name of the Lord. 
His neighbor and said, pray. I need to get saved, and I need to develop a prayer life of fellowship with Jesus. Amen? See, it's not rocket science. The Bible lays this out. Why does he want me to have that? Jeremiah 33, 3. He said, call upon me, and I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That's an invitation for us to pray, to invite him in our lives, and God will move in our lives when we invite him in. One advantage it says it seems like God does nothing on earth unless me and ask him to do it. So we need to be praying for our nation. Matter of fact, we need to start griping, belly aching about it. Amen. Complaining about this, that, the other. Jeremiah 29, 7 says, seek the peace of the city whither I have carried you to be captives. I have told people of the same shade as I am, this is what you and I need to be doing. Too many of us are caught up in blaming the world and people of a different skin tone from how things are in the world. We got brought over here and we were under slavery. Every nationality is here slaves. So get over it. No need to be bitter. Why be mad at somebody about what happened 180 years ago? They're dead, I'm living. See, that will ban you. Jeremiah 29, 7. Seek the peace, I say, of the nation, where the God had carried you away to be captives. For in seeking the peace thereof, you have peace. Oh, see, that's the, that's the key right there to soothing all of this stuff that people have relative to the bitterness. Just do the word. Amen? Just do what God said and settle the whole issue. And forgive. Amen. Take the cup of salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord. Verse 14, pay your vows in the presence of the people. Attend the church. Man, pastor, how do you see all that stuff in there? It's right there. What shall I give unto the Lord for his benefits? Get saved. Pray. Keep your vows in the presence of God's people. Your commitment as a believer to do what believers do. Believers are sheep. We assemble. We flock together. Amen. Man, it's right there here. Amen. And then notice what else he says. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, verse 14, now in the presence of all his people. See, his people are to assemble together. So it's not just Hebrews 10, 25. This is what we do as the body of Christ. We come together. Amen. Because of the benefit of salvation, he wants you and I to run together in a flock. And we do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse, uh, <laughs> verse 17, he tells us, uh, we should give the Lord our offer unto thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We need to thank God. Bless his name. See, you get the, the look at the benefits. All the saints put it this way. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And they would stand up and say, I thank God that I've got my health and strength. When's the last time we thank God for just being alive? Means a little more to you when you get a little older. See, when you're younger, a lot of stuff you take for granted. Amen. Thank God for the blessing of another day. Whether you're young or old, you're not guaranteed one. See, each day we have is by the grace of God. We need to thank God for that day. Amen? So he tells us here that we need to give unto him the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Psalms 100 says, be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Oh, the saints, says, I thank God that I'm still clothed in my right man. How many of y'all remember that? As you thought God for your mental capacity. Amen. See, if we got caught up in some of the stuff in the world, we didn't know about lost our man, but you didn't. God kept you. Amen. Thank God, amen, that he has kept you through the pandemic. And you're still here, still, still full of life and vigor, amen. Still able to lift your hands and magnify God and bless his name. Still able to say, thank you, Lord God. You've been good through it all, in spite of it all. God, you've been good. 
Wasn't easy, but I made it in Jesus' name. See, God is able to keep us. We're given a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Amen. When I don't feel like it, he's still worthy. The Bible calls it given on him the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. He's worthy no matter what's going on in the world around us. Amen. And so we gather to worship. Verse 18, I will pay my vows now to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Over and over. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Amen. So we render unto the Lord praise. What's praise in that sense? Man, I heard somebody say this last night. They jumped all over me. I wrote it down. He said, praise is telling God what you think about him. See, see, that should make it easier for us to praise God, shouldn't it? And what he's done for you. But you got to think about what has God done for me. Amen. See, that's why you you count your many blessings. Amen. You call him out. Thank God for keeping you, blessing you with health and strength, keeping your mind settled so you didn't just lose it. Amen. Yeah, you might have had afflictions in the body, but thank God he brought you through them. Amen. Everybody didn't make it through, but bless God you did. Amen. You know, just thank God that he kept you and his hand is on you, that God has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, that God has given us an assurance that he'll intervene on our lives if we call on him. And so we do this in obedience to God in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we had a great worship service this morning. Well, what's worship for? Soften your heart. <laughs> yeah, that's what music does, isn't it? Amen. Almost everything in the world is involved with some type of music. They want to play something in you. When we assemble in God's house, amen, it's to play, and the music is saying to get something off of us, to soften us up so we can receive God's word. Amen. If it didn't work, wouldn't be a need to do it. See, we got to have faith that when we come together, God, that's why I said earlier, we're not going to leave like we came. Amen. God's put something in you and I in Jesus' name. And I might not need it today, but I, I surely will down the road. Amen. There'll come a time where I need to give a sacrifice of praise. Man, it looks tight, looks rough, looks like the world is caving in. And that's when praise is a sacrifice. Amen. Easy to praise God when everything's well, every bill's paid. Amen. Cars are doing well, everything's great in your life. Amen. But when life turns south on you, you still honor God as a sacrifice. And God will move in our behalf because that's part of what he said. It's a benefit of us being a child, a daughter of God, a son. Amen. And we have a father. Amen. Who moves in our behalf when we call him in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we give you praise. Yes, 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 God, we give you glory. We magnify you, Lord God. Just lift your hand where you are for a moment. Just bless God. Amen. Just call to remembrance just how God, good God has been to you in your life and just thank him. Just, just for a moment, give him glory for who he is, that he is our redeemer, the God of our salvation. That he is the one that keeps us and illuminates us through his word, leads and guides us by his spirit. Amen. That makes a way for us when it looks like there is no way. Jesus still is that way out and, and we bless his name for it. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that we are forgiven, that our sins are not laid to our charge, that you've given us a new life, a fresh start, a new beginning, God, in Jesus' name. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the same way you entered our lives, that you changed our hearts, we ask you to burden us, God, to go out into this world and to see other hearts and lives changed. In the name of Jesus, God, use us, we ask. God, we render unto you, we give unto you our bodies as living sacrifices. And we pray, God, that you will use us, Lord, in the work of ministry. That we might be used by you, God, to reach out into the, the hedges and the byways to compel people to come in. God, we ask you to be glorified by our living. And God, we will bless your name for all that you do in our lives. And we'll bless your name forever in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anyone here now not knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior, you say, God, today, Lord, I want to turn from this world. 
I recognize now, Lord, that my salvation isn't based on what I give up. Amen. It's based on who I receive into my life. If there's anyone here right now, you say, Lord God, today, Jesus, I want to settle the issue of my eternity. Where every head is bowed, every eye closed just for a moment. If you'll just shoot your hand up saying, Lord God, today, Jesus, save me. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for me. And today, God, I want to give you my life. Maybe there's someone else that you've gotten your life right. You give, gave your life to the Lord. But because of the weight of this world and distractions, you were pulled away. And you said, Lord God, today, Lord, I want to come home. God, I want to recommit my life to your hands, Lord. In the name of Jesus, is there anyone now? Amen. I see that one hand. Is there anyone else in Jesus' name? We're all going to pray together in just a moment. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, wherever head bowed, is that hand I see up, is it for salvation or recommittal? Just wiggle your hand if it's one or the other. Amen. Praise God. We're going to pray either way. Amen. Maybe there's somebody else you've allowed to wait, the pressures of life, to get you overburdened and weighed down. And you say, Lord, I need relief today. Amen. Could you raise your hand in Jesus' name? Jesus is willing to lift the burdens to set you free. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Take his yoke upon you. His yoke is easy. His burden light. Let's pray together in Jesus name. Amen. First concerning the hand raised concerning. We're going to pray and you pray with us for salvation. In Jesus name and reestablishing of life in relationship with Jesus. And God, we thank you for doing that. God, we pray in the name of Jesus right now. Let's say this together. Lord God, I come to you right now. I know you died for me. And Jesus, I turn from this world. And I turn, Lord, to you. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. Save me. And I commit to walk with you from this day on. In the name of Jesus, you said in your word, if I called on you, you would save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life in Jesus' name. And Lord God, maybe I've stumbled along the way. This is for the other. But God, today, I call on you. Wash me in your precious blood. Restore me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And I serve you from this moment to the best of my ability in Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray for the peace, the power of the Holy Spirit to set watch and guard over those lives in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, for those who are under the weight of sin, God, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would lift the heavy burden. Right now, where you are, cast the burden on the Lord. Say, Lord God, I release the weight. I'm not built to carry it. And so, God, I cast it on you. God, remove the weight, the condemnation, the anger, the bitterness. Every weight I cast on you now. God, I command you to let the oppressed go free this moment. And every spirit from the enemy, God, that will seek to bring oppression and weights and God, to bind your people, God, we command to go in Jesus' name. And God, we thank you for healing, which is the children's bread as well. We thank you, God, for renewing our bodies in the name of Jesus. That by your stripes, God, we are healed. And for healing, God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. God, we bless you today. Amen. You know, not just when we hear that along the, go back and read Psalms 103 and out of your lips. As a sacrifice, bless the Lord. Amen. Write down, remember some of the benefits that God has added to your life. Amen. I, nobody knows those better than you. And thank God for what he's done in you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I think as you do, you'll find a new appreciation for who Jesus is in you. And what Jesus can do in our lives in Jesus' name.